First is uh, Becky Elmadovar. Am I close? Good. She describes herself as a rubber band ball, a colorful, bouncy, and unpredictable. She takes interest in all areas of art and is an aspiring writer working on a book called Soapbox Essays about her life and strong opinions on various topics. She is an animal rights activist who enjoys all kinds of music, video games, body modifications, and standing out. Please, if you will, welcome Becky to the podium. Hi, my name's Becky. I'm an alcoholic. No, I just lied to you, I'm not. <laughs> um, I'm gonna read four pieces for you today. Three are about boys. One's about my experience growing up between two completely opposite families. But first, let's do the juicy boy poems. The first one is about a guy I met. His name is Jesse Miller. I met him at Christ Camp in 2005, where I thought for sure I was gonna be burned at the stake for being a heathen. Anyway, here's my testament for him. And the sky seemed pale against the two blue angels. They offered a faithless Jezebel hope and contentment, refuge from the raging demons in her head. But the angels are also in her head. And only in memory can she be saved because, she not, because now she has wandered too far from them. And though she longs to return to them, she can't because God is punishing her for past, present, and future sins would be admonished. So the faithless girl takes the demons by the hand and says, take me because I'm not worthy of such beauty. The demons strip her of her face and rest of her hair. Her soul sets to deteriorate in the field of broken dreams. But she lives on crawling blindly through shambles. For in her blindness, she's able to see nothing but angels and they dress her wound in moonlight sonatas. Yeah, that was my first poem. <laughs> Thank you. My next piece is called The Stillborn Midnight Summer. It's about <clears throat> Billy Cupillus, and he's a compulsive liar. I was undergoing serious issues with men when I wrote this poem. August 23rd, 2009, A Stillborn Midnight Summer. The fog has overhauled your dully colored stillborn summer. Me, I gauged new life with my new mistress. Her fountain of youth lies among the squatters of Alphabet City. Me, I cast off my dead fallible shell to taste the color of the earth that you tried so hard to hide from me. Filating my mistress, Mother Nature, I drink the discharge of her tantric breath as she pulls me forward from your faded bluish bug zapper light and spreads moss over your damned path of lies. Me, my earth restores herself so I can live forward. Daffodils polish off shame and restore my floral crown of thorns. Queen poison ivy, I stitch holes that you used to pull me backward into. Me, my restored kiss will respire your breath into me and immobilize your plague. Me, I'm the succubus from your dreams and wet thoughts. My sweet anther swells, Aphrodite, penetrator of Mother Nature's androgynous soul and destroyer of the wicked viral. That was poem number two. Thank you. Uh, my third poem, I'm not really sure what it's about, but it's called The Dance of the Burning Windmill. Like bleach on black jeans, the vision is diluted and my personal's fray disappointing threads. The life has been washed away from the wisteria under my boots, that same wisteria that would pry things out of place, but not the salt from my hair. Only you can breathe life, in, life into me, but you seem so cold lately, and in the warm breath in the dry air, phantom hands appear in black lace. Like roots, they run down the forearm, tripping red to fill the empty space. You left me comatose in an empty washroom in the field of the heathen after being stripped of my tether. Giant windmills up on the hill are ablaze today, igniting flames that tear, tr tear through the sky and smoke that chokes the life out. Chokes like the strangler fig that is attached to my backbone as you strike the match and leave me immobilized. All I can do is watch everything as it happens to me from the mirrors in your eyes. That's poem number three. The last piece I'm going to read was inspired by Willie Perdomo from a poem he wrote called Where I'm From. I wrote it in 2007. It's about growing up with two completely opposite families. My mother's side was from Guatemala, 
grew up in a very strict household. And then my dad's side was from Puerto Rico, and basically they accepted everything about me. <laughs> so here it goes. Where I'm from, I see the million shades of brown and silver from my Nana's hair as she smoked her cigarette, and how she looked so sophisticated, holding it with her long French manicured fingernails. She could do anything with those nails, including braiding ribbons into my hair, making cakes, and preparing oatmeal with raisins. Where I'm from, the cigarette smoke in the kitchen always went against the light from a half-open window and gave it this misty rainforest feeling. The rainforest cockatiel named King always took it upon himself to open his cage and sit on the table at dinner time. His brilliant yellow mohawk and orange cheeks always gave away his stealthiest positions. He would cry out in defiance when we started using the little red twist ties from the bread to keep his cage door shut, but eventually he mastered those too. I was glad because now he could join me for a sunflower seed brunch. Where I'm from, there were tiny white flowers that grew in the grass that I so carefully picked out to place over King's grave when he died. We always had funerals under the bee tree in our backyard. Each faded purple or blue walkway stone was a tomb to lost loved ones, including various finches, iguanas, tarantulas, snakes, and fish. Where I'm from, our yard was a pet cemetery and a botanical garden, and I was a mermaid. I spent morning till night in our giant blue pool accompanied by my grandfather, who would play his oldies tapes on his giant ghetto blaster. Nana would always yell at him for trampling her flowers or knocking over pots, but in my eyes, my grandpa could do no wrong. My protector was a giant fat alley cat named Tyran who would hide in the tall grass and growl. If anyone got too close, he swatted them with his paws because he was fearless. Where I'm from, I taste blood from my lips because on Sunday nights, my mother would come. You see, I only spent weekends in Eden. During the week, I was exiled from its safety. I fought ferociously to stay with my grandparents, and my mother literally had to pry my tiny hands from the rail at the back door. My shiny black Mary Janes took an equally as harsh beating as I did, except their scars were white while mine were purple and blue. It was like a witch had come to take me away from the only happiness I ever had as a child. I was confined to a basement with no smell of coffee, no tiny green praying mantis in my grandfather's hands, no surprises from Nana, no ribbons, and no china dolls. She had stolen my son, and all I had left was the salt from my tears. Where I'm from, I feel cold inside and deprived of the childhood I deserved. I feel abandoned by a father who pretended not to see my bruises and refused to wipe my tears. But how could he? He was only a voice on the phone. I felt alone while button eyes watched over me from my bed as I counted sleeping pills and muffled out the whimpers from the next room with tear-stained pillows. I feel the sting of belts and open hands. Where I'm from, my soul was kicked into overdrive, and I was instilled with the heart of a warrior. I got it from my Puerto Rican nana. My thirst for revolution, that part will go down in Guatemala. Thank you. <laughs>